Hello, everyone. I am Ben Johnson, and this is the Perpetual Chess Podcast. Perpetual Chess is a weekly interview show where top chess players, authors, content creators, and accomplished amateurs discuss their careers and share stories and chess improvement tips. Perpetual Chess is a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network, and we'd like to give special thanks to our presenting chess education sponsor, Chessable.com. For more information about the show, you can go to PerpetualChessPod.com. But without further ado, let's get to the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perpetual Chess. As you likely saw in the title, we've got a treat for you this week. Uh, One of the top players in the world from the 1970s and 80s, peak number four world ranking, Grandmaster Ulf Andersson. Ulf, of course, is uh, probably the best Swedish player of all time, Swedish national champion, 16-time Olympian for the Swedish Olympiad team. Um, Stylistically, he's known as kind of a uh, Karpovian slash Carlsonian uh, positional maestro, um, particular expertise in the end game. He was famed for grounding people down in equalish positions, just an incredible sense of uh, where the pieces go. I tried to get a little info revealing his secrets in our interview, but mostly he just told fantastic stories. Of course, his uh, his having been at the top of the uh, the chess world for so many years, he got to play so many legends, Kasparov, Karpov, Korchnoi, Tall. We discuss his impressions of these players and many more. Um, as you'll hear us discuss, Ulf now splits his time between Germany and his native Sweden. In particular, when he's in Sweden, he leads quite an analog lifestyle. Um, So I don't even think he knows what a podcast is, but luckily I was able to call him on the phone for this interview. Uh, Just a reminder, English is not Ulf's first language, although I do think his English is quite good. And I think the audio quality uh, turned out decent considering that this is a, this was done by phone. Um, One other thing about Ulf, he's also a correspondence chess champion, although he's now retired from that, as you'll hear us discuss. So uh, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Let's get you to this uh, really fun, really long interview with the legend of the game, Grandmaster Ulf Andersson. And we are here with the legendary Swedish champion, uh, been one of the top five players in the world, especially renowned for his positional master mastery. Welcome, Grandmaster Ulf Andersson. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Yeah, I'm really excited to chat with with someone of your stature and to hear your story. So, Ulf, I understand that you're joining us from Germany. Yeah, I'm here in Germany now. I my my woman is a German chess player, and and uh, I'm mostly in Germany, but also in Sweden. But I'm here quite often. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And where do you live in Germany when you're there? Near, near Cologne, near Cologne, yeah, here. Okay, and have you learned to speak German? Sorry? Do you speak German? Sprechen Sie yeah, Deutsch? I speak, I speak some German, I do. and uh, But um, in general, I prefer to speak English. But I, um, I have studied some German at school many years ago also. Okay, and... Ulf, you you still play some. My coach, Grandmaster Axel Bachman, noticed that you're registered for a tournament in South America. Are you still spending most of your time on chess? Yeah, I'm spending my time on chess, and and um, but I haven't played so many tournaments during the last years, especially not not now because of the this uh, COVID. Yeah, then. I've been more passive, but I I started a few months ago here and playing some uh, blitz tournament and rapid tournament in in Austria and in in Holland, and also uh, an annual blitz tournament in Malmo in the south of Sweden that I've done a few times also. That, but now um, I will little by little I intend to to play some normal open tournaments with um, with a normal time schedule yeah with one and a half hour for 40 moves that's exciting and so are you signed up for specific tournaments no not for i i'm now going with the swedish team in the european club championship in austria they 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 have a tournament there in in um, yeah it's in austria in well near the mountains and it, it's uh, 
yeah, many teams are uh, are there, and some, some, for instance, Carlson is playing for a Norwegian team there as well. Oh, right, yeah, I saw that. And by the way, yeah. I should say we're recording on Friday, September 30th. And Ulf, these days, when you get ready for a tournament, do you still review openings or study games at all, or uh, is that not as big a priority? Yeah, I, I like to look at games, games from from many players in general, no, and and uh, and also I'm looking even when I'm not playing on, I'm studying <clears throat> on the internet, checking the tournaments. So I I found it uh, interesting. It's nice to see there are so many tournaments these days with uh, in rapid chess, yeah, on online and so and. Um, and Carlsen is playing in many of these tournaments. It's always very interesting to see when he's playing. I think he's really, really good. I, I, I really like how he plays. Yeah, I guess that's not surprising since you, of course, are legendary for your positional mastery and your endgame skills, and Carlsen is as well. Ah, uh-huh. yes. Well, well, I, I try to play. My own play that I've been playing all my life, so to say. I, when it's possible, I try to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I read in an interview when you were younger. How do you feel that you became so strong? Is it from reading books and study, or primarily from learning from playing? Yeah, it's mostly my training. It was actually to play, to, to play many tournaments, many games, and so on, and. The, yeah, I enjoyed it all the time, and, and and I was yeah very busy with chess all my life, so to say. I've been professional since I was 19 years old. From 1970, I began to play professionally, and and um, well, there there was it was different many years ago. Then it was two and a half hours for 40 moves. Today it's quicker. It's not so much time to think today as as we had before. Because also when the games were adjourned, it was then 16 moves for each hour. So the game could last easily six, seven hours or even more sometimes. Today the games are over uh, after four or maximum five hours. No? But then, many years ago, then the games were adjourned. And then you analyzed during the nights and so on. And then you continued uh, yeah, on the free day or, or in the morning or in the, or in the evening during the tournaments. And that was, that was very, was I, very tiring if you had a John game and then you analyzed all the night. And then you had to play the game in the morning. And then you had to play the normal game in the afternoon. So then when this happened, it is, yeah, I was given. I played my normal games after the John game, so to say. It was, it was tougher in that way. Yeah, th- yeah. that makes sense. I, uh, Douglas Griffin, who's a pretty well-known uh, chess historian, I asked him if he had any questions for you because he's written about you on his blog. And on that note, he asked... He said do, he was wondering if you think that the faster games and the fact that people are often just playing on increment, does it does it mean, do you see people playing worse in end games than they did when there were slower time controls when you were um, yeah. a top well, player? Well, to, today it is, I, for instance, I find it more difficult to play with less time, no? But when it's time pressure... If you compare the time pressure from now and before, it's then before it was very difficult. Today, time pressure is is, is not really difficult. It's because you have always thirty seconds for each move. Before, when you have to when you want time pressure, you had to play maybe ten, fifteen moves in in a couple of minutes when you were in time pressure. So that was, but but all over you had more time from the beginning, no. Because two and a half hours, but today, for forty moves you have one hour fifty minutes 
together with the increment. It becomes one hour and 50 minutes. And it's, it's 40 minutes less for 40 moves, the first 40 moves. But the time pressure is okay today. That is, that is, um, I, I suffered more in time pressure many years ago, but not today. Not today. But, but in the beginning, when this rule happened, when they started to play like this, it was, yeah, then I was um, very worried about you know, this with only one and a half hour plus 30 seconds for each move. No? But it went on. All right, getting used to it, and it's 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 too good, good, good with this new rule. I think I like, and I like when it's now played. The games are played without adjourn, adjournments, because these adjournments took a lot of energy, and it was difficult to sleep at night and so, and and a lot of work in the night if you had a John game. So, it's, so I prefer how it is today. Yeah, and of course now if there were an adjournment, you can just turn the engine on. <laughs> yeah, that is true, and this is this good. They the games are played uh, right away, just till the end. I I I like that very much this way. Yeah. Now, in the most recent World Championship oof between uh, Magnus and Napomnici, they actually went back to the format without increments and. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, and Magnus said that he was a fan of that. He's kind of he compared it to like, he said the increments are kind of like riding a bicycle with training wheels or something like yeah. that. Do Do you yeah. think that for the very elite players, it could be a better way to force them to maybe get in more time trouble and make more mistakes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is well. It is possible to that there will be more mistakes when it's not. Um, Increment, for instance, when when you use a lot of time in the beginning, and then at the end, or to end up with well, it happened to me many times. I had to play five, ten, or moves at least for just a few minutes left, no, and and that that was very difficult. You had to be uh, attend very well. When you at the border, you could you could not walk and and so you, you don't you didn't even have time to go to the toilet if you needed to you had to be there and and um, and that was really tough i must say that was very tough yeah and with engines now available uh when you do look at games you mentioned you like to keep up with modern games do you use the engine or just look with it turned off no i i, I when I look on the internet here, the tournaments online and so on, and then there is, you can see the engine together with the game there. No, you cannot avoid it. But in general, I don't use computer for for training or so on. Only, uh, I use a computer for, in order to have many games, thousands of games that I can, can look at. Because I'm not so interested to see what the engine thinks about the positions and so on. I want. I enjoy to analyze myself. That that's uh, admirable. And you mentioned Magnus Carlsen, of course. Ulf, is there another modern player whose games you really enjoy? Yeah, I enjoy many players how they play, but but especially Magnus Carlsen. He's he's tremendous, I think. And and, and but many other players too. I, I like to see from the top players. Um, yeah, I cannot name them all because there are many, many. Yeah, that but makes for, sense. But, they, go but, ahead. But for me, Magnus Carlsen is uh, yeah very special. I think, I, and um, he he's always fun, finding something, fighting very well, and finding something, even if it's nothing in the position, he makes something uh, anyway. Somehow he succeeds to 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 force a place to. To play well in, in order to very well in order to 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 draw with him, even if it's not much in the position, so to say, he keeps yeah yeah he finds him always something always something. And you played him Ulf, when he was just a teenager. Uh, yeah. What was that like? Yeah, that that, that was was okay. We played. Also, all some players from the older generation against some players of the younger generation, and it was Carlson, 
uh, one from China and a couple of Dutch players. And um, let me see, there was uh, one, a uh, karyakin was also there of the young players at that time. We played in Holland and, and in Amsterdam, actually. And um, yeah, that was, that was nice to play with them. And they were very strong already, all these players, all these youngsters, yeah. And yeah. Carlson, he had the best result of, of all the players, I think. Yeah, it looks like he tied for first with Beliavsky, I guess, who this is called the Youth Experience Tournament, uh, 2006. Um, yeah. And what did you think of Magnus's decision uh, not to defend his world championship, Ulf? Sorry, I didn't hear well. What did you think of the Magnus Carlsen announcement that he won't defend the world championship title? Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's a pity. I, 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 I would like that he, if I could decide, I would like that he would continue defending the title and so because it's normal. I think no world champion ever did that. It was well only Fisher because, but he stopped. Magnus is continuing playing all the time, which I find is very good because. The world champions normally they don't maybe don't, they don't play so many tournaments like Magnus plays. Magnus Carlsen plays nonstop all things, yeah. And this is yeah, very impressive, and it's always playing well and always in the top, winning all the tournaments mostly, or being in the very top all the time. And, and yeah, this is very impressive to me. All this, yeah. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, and then we'll be back with more from the legend Grandmaster Ulf Anderson. Perpetual Chess is proud to be brought to you in part by our presenting chess education sponsors, Chessable.com. Of course, Chessable uses space repetition to help you learn opening sequences, tactical patterns, um, specific end games, whatever it may be that you need to work on on your game. Uh, some of their latest courses include Understanding Chess Openings Part 3 by none other than Big Vladdy, former world champion Grandmaster Vladimir Kramnik, sharing his lifetime of expertise on uh, how to respond to various E4 possibilities. So be sure to check that out. And they have a, a free preview for Chessable Pro members. So please just remember to make it part of your routine to go to chessable.com and check out uh, all of their new offerings, which are available both for free and for purchase. So, Ulf, of course, you're a legendary player and you played so many legends. Um, I would like to just ask you to share your thoughts about a few of your uh, contemporaries. Is it, is it okay if I just give you some some names and you tell me what, what you think about? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so let's start with uh, Mikhail Tal. I know you've played him more than 25 times um, and had some interactions who, with who, him as well. Who did you say? Mikhail Tal. Ah, Mikhail Tal, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I played many games with him and, and, and in the tournament and also two uh, short matches. And once the match was in Stockholm and once the match was in Malmö, besides all the all the tournaments that we played together. And and that was yeah, very nice to play him all the time. It was yeah yeah, I I admired his play all the time, and 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 um, yeah, he he was well known as to sacrifice a lot, so but but he played very positional chess also, I must say, and and um, yeah, he won so many games in his life. It is fantastic. He was a fantastic player, I think. And did you spend much time with him away from the board? Uh, no, no, not really. We, but we always analyzed after the games and so on. We always analyze. And, and, and this I, that I found today, that doesn't happen so much today, that after the games I see the play, players they shake hands and they go one, one to his direction and the other to another direction. Then before, then we went to, to the to the to the analyzing room and then we sit there hours analyzing the games that you play it, with all the plays, with, with Karp or with Kasparov, with Tal, Spassky, uh, uh, Petrosian and so on, and, and, uh, and all the other plays too. And 
and this is what I'm missing today, so to say. When, also, when I play open tournaments as well, there's also not much analyzer, uh, analysis after the game. They play shake hands and they go away. And, and yeah, that's, that is different compared with before, I think. Yeah, it's... It's a bit sad for for sure. Was is there any player who impressed you the most when in post mortem analysis of? Um, let me see now. Well, um, yeah, in, well, in, not really, but sometimes I remember. Sometimes I was analyzing with Petrosian, and and Petrosian he made. Very aggressive things and, and, and sacrificing. So, but then in the games, in the own games, no. Then he was very careful and 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 played different from what he analyzed. And 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 when he got some initiative, so he could press you down for hours, hours. So, so it was very important never to have well a bad position with him because that was terrible to play with him for instance yeah <laughs> well people say yeah. the same thing about you Ulf, right <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah well, well i enjoyed when i have little when i had a little better position and, and i enjoyed just to sit there at the board and to to play and to analyze and to play as well so it was it was uh, yeah today it's not like that that is more was say more I'm more tense today. Before I was very, very relaxed, and I, it was like, um, yeah, sitting there, and almost like yoga for me. You no, know? just sitting there, enjoying the life, and just going to the positions and so on. And uh, yeah, yeah, that is different from from today for me, for instance. When when did that start to change for you? Of yeah, yeah, or maybe. Yeah, twenty twenty five years ago, I would say. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, So it, it, it has been more difficult to play for me from that point of view with the tension. So during during all these years, no, and and sometimes when I play some tournament, some open, then I can when it's a double round or so, then I say that I don't play double rounds, for instance, and then I take a bye just. Or if I'm I feel a lot of stress and I'm I don't even play maybe one game that day either. So I I, I try to play what I can manage, so to say. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. As uh, as we're not young, not as young as uh, as we used to be. I, I'm uh, I'm 45 and I feel it already. Ah yes, yes. Um, yeah, it is. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, the next player I wanted to ask you about, Ulf, is uh, you played uh, Bobby Fischer in 1970. That is right. We played here in Germany. Uh, it was right after the Olympia in Siegen, because the the Olympia was there in Siegen, and and the Fischer played for the United States. So, and then there was one man from the from the Swedish newspaper coming. To see again, and he was also ex Swedish champion. He had been champions many years ago then, and and he wanted to have a game in his newspaper. It was Expression. It's called these newspapers because because we have two, let say, afternoon papers which are very big in Sweden. It's Expression and Aftonbladet, and and he wanted to have a game with Fischer, and we and we would play. Uh, a normal game. It was one or two days right after the Olympiad. He was in one hotel and we had a special room there. And we were only five people, I think, in the room. And um, and um, yeah, we played like a normal game. But um, yeah, and then the game would be uh, be shown in the newspaper for one move each day, just. And uh, so the the game was going on in the newspaper newspaper for quite a long time and and i was yeah i was i remember i was very worried before the game and so on and and um, and and of course fisher won the game he played a good game but it was a pressure to to play with him and 
and and after the game, we analyzed for a long time there also, and and um, that was very nice, I must say, and and uh, I admired Fisher very much, I must say. Yeah, and you were just nineteen then, correct? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, that must have been uh, quite an experience. Yeah, it was. It was really an experience, and and, I, and that's the only time. I could play with him, but I saw him also playing in the in the great interzonal tournament on Mallorca when he won a few points ahead of the second place, and and I was there as a tourist for for one week, and I remember when I saw his game there, and and, uh, and yeah, he won so impressively. Also, it was also a game. When he played, he was going to play with Panno one day, but but he couldn't want to play the the normal time, so they had to play other time because Fischer was Jewish, and they gave him permission to do that. But Panno didn't like this, so uh, they, but both players were in a playing hall, and Panno was going to look at the other games. He didn't make a move. And, and Fischer had played, I think he had played C4 in the first move. And, um, and the, so he, Fischer won the game um, without play, so to say. But, but I saw that happen. And, and um, yeah, well, nobody said anything. It was okay. Everything was okay. And, uh, but I, I, I never spoke to Fischer more than when I played the game with him. I, I saw him on distance later on. Ah, uh, okay. Um and Ulf, I'm friendly with uh, Grandmaster Jakob Algard, who I believe you know as well. Um, who? Uh, who? Jakob Algard. I yes, yes, from from Denmark. Yes, yes moving back to Denmark. Um, yes, yeah, yes, yes. So I asked him uh, what I, what he thought I should ask you, and he gave me a list. Uh, one of the things he mentioned was to ask you what you felt about Victor Korchnoi. Oh yeah, yeah. This I liked very much. It was maybe my favorite player. He became my favorite player player during the year, so to say, because he was fighting fantastically and and now always fighting. And and even when he was old, when he was over eighty, he was fighting and wanted to win and so on. And the fantastic energy he had also. And 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 he played. Yeah, he was fighting, but he was also, I say, he was very, uh, what shall I say? Um, yeah, he understood. He did. He didn't overplay, so to say. Sometimes play can be too optimistic, overplay the positions and so. But he never did that. He was just a fighter at the board, and, and it's a pity that he that he didn't succeed to be world champion. But it was too difficult because it was Karpov at that time, and he was really the best. So no one could had the chance to win a match against Karpo. He was he was the best, but, but it would have been uh, uh, nice if, if Kotsu would have succeeded to be world champion also. And he was also in, there in his position so many years. And, 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 and he, as I found it, he, he loved to play chess and analyze and so on. And, he, he, and uh, uh, yeah, almost fanatic. And I liked it very much by him, for instance. I liked it extremely much. And you also played Korchnoi when you were 19 and, and beat him in a memorable game. Do you do you remember much about that encounter, Ulf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I, I played many games with him in, in my life. And, and I remember when I played him the first times and so and um, And I succeeded to win even. I, I was... I, Amazed, I couldn't believe it, but but I was very nervous for the games, and and he tried to press me and so on, and I was defending and defending, and and I won I won the first game, but 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 he was all, had always a little better position, and he wanted to, I felt like he wanted to win, yeah, at almost at any cost, and he wanted to win with let's say. Two or three zero, not with one zero, and 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 that's why I could escape, so to say. And then 
and then it turned, the game turned after 40 moves, and then I could win the game even. And and and, and after the game, we analyzed a lot. That was in Vikansé, and, and all, then Petrosian was also in the tournament, and he was sitting there analyzing with us and so on, and it, it we had a nice time after, after the game, all three of us there, and 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 yeah, that's the things that I I uh, I miss today, so to say. Yeah, those those um, they are good moments, so to say, very good moments, and I miss also many many of these yeah all the players that passed away and so on. That I miss a lot today, all them actually. Yeah, it's it's uh. Not not like the old days. That's why, uh, with with the chess news today, it hasn't been that good. So I thought it would be fun to hear some stories from you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. but we'll talk more about that later. Uh, with with Victor. Um, so it sounds like your post mortem with him was pretty friendly because, of course, lots of people have stories of less friendly post mortem uh, post mortems <laughs> with Korchnoi. Yeah, yeah, I have heard also that some players have had yeah problems with him, no? But but he never made any crazy box remark about me, never. But uh, and um, he he loved to analyze also and to and to be objective in the analyze, so very objective. And, and yeah, it was always a pleasure to analyze with him too. I must say. Besides playing, also, yeah. Okay. And uh, Jakob also said that I should ask you about your matches with uh, Bent Larsen. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, we, we played one match. It was in, was it 70, 75? Yeah, 74 or 70, 74, or, I think it was, 1974, in Stockholm, in the center of Stockholm. And, and, um, and um, yeah, that was. Very interesting match for me, especially, and but and I because I won this match, and, and I was surprised also because before we had played a few games in the in the yeah, in the Olympia, we played in Siegen, for instance, and, and he won easily, well, quite easily, positionally with yeah against me, and I played with one isolated pawn, and he, he and he played well, and he won this game. And I won, lost another game with him, and so I was worried for this match. So, but in this match, yeah, I, I didn't do much. I tried just to not to to make weaknesses in my position in general. And and um, and he was pushing too much. He was yeah, and uh, and always very eager to win with Larsen, yeah. And and that was yeah, always so he was very eager to win at uh, yeah, almost at any cost, I would say. And and that that's why I think he he lost he could lose a number of games, but but he could win so many games, and and at that time I think he was a dangerous player for the for the Russian players because he could win with the Russians and so on. And he and he also won many tournaments in the sixties. He was maybe the, the best player in the world for to- tournament player in the sixties. Yeah, and but. But when it came later on to to the qualification qualification for the world championship and so on, and he, when he lost to, to Fisher with six zero, that was yeah, that was very sad for him, and and uh, yeah, he couldn't catch up with that and and to be world champion or, or anything. But I remember when he played this famous international tournament uh, on Mallorca, when Fischer won the tournament in a very nice way, and Larsen played a very good game for Fischer, and he beat him with black pieces in the Sicilian. And because and he was very happy. And, and after the game, then I was with him. I, I was speaking with his wife, and, and she told me to, to join them after the game to go somewhere to have a cough or something and, and, and when Bent had finished the game he came after and, and he was so happy that he beat 
with the fisher. I, I never saw him so happy in all my life. And and, and uh, when when you see that game, then then you can yeah really think that he would have chances with Fischer. But but he didn't help in the match. Fischer crushed Larsen completely. Yeah, that's more or less what happened. Yeah, he played Fisher at the wrong time. <laughs> Fisher was crushing yeah, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is true. That is true. Yeah, Bob, Bobby was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it must. Yeah, he he could he he did stop everybody there on the board. Yeah, and and, and all this very was a very uh, good play and and no no. Luck and it, not taking risks. He's just playing strong chess and just beating everybody, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of strong chess, uh, what have your experiences with uh, Kasparov been like? Oh. Yeah. Also, yeah, Kasparov. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I was and I am still very impressed by his play and 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 um, when he came and uh, he. When he showed up well, abroad for the first time, as I know, it was in uh, in Yugoslavia at that time, in, in Banja Luka. It was a tournament, a close tournament there. And at those times before, it was normally 16 players in the tournament that you never see today. But that was the almost every tournament was with 16 players. And then he was there. He was coming uh, together with Petrosian, and uh, he had no rating at that time. <laughs> but everybody knew that that he that he was very good. And and and, and uh, organizers that even wrote a letter before asking him because he was not on list in the beginning of the of the tournament so there but they asking the places they accepted that he play is on there. Of course no problem, even if he didn't have any rating. But but he won the tournament convincingly and and also many good games. Um excellent games already at that time. And and later on he became worse and worse so to say and more like a monster. And and I found the difference the main difference for me that was when when Carpo played the tournament so he was so satisfied to win the tournament just with half a point or so it was okay for him but Kasparov he, he wanted to play every game and to win with as many points as possible and 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 that was what I found the difference between him and Carpo and yeah because he. He, he always played hard and almost like um, he, he, how you say if you play ice hockey and so you think think when the plays were making four checking so to say he was four checking all the time also when he was black he was kind of a four checking and he didn't give you uh, time to, to to rest so to say you had to be you know, tent all the time yeah. even when you had white with him you had to be yeah attend to the position and so so that, that that was special that was very difficult to play against him because he always playing well and extremely well and very dangerous all the time yeah yeah and Yasser Sarawan described it as like playing a caged animal when he played Kasparov ah uh, yes yes yeah that is true that is true and um, yeah, but it was a pleasure. I I enjoyed playing him very much, no. And um, even though I lost a number of games, but but um, it was very nice in a way to play him. I'm glad that I I got the opportunity to play with him and Karpov and so on, of course. But Karpov I played many more times because we are the same generation. But I played many times with Karpov also. But but uh, I enjoyed it. <coughs> And do you have a favorite memory of all your games against Karpov and <coughs> or your uh, your interactions with him, Ulf? With whom? With, with Karpov. Yeah, with Karpov, we had many fights and so, but I lost many games to him. But but I happened to win one game, and I could I could win only one time with with black pieces. With, and but I lost mainly with black. But with white, when I played with white, it was all draws, always draws when we played. 
he never won. I never won either. But 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 it was very dangerous to play black against Carpo, especially with black, because then he was trying for a long time. He would be trying with everybody for a long time, but. <clears throat> But when you had white with him, <clears throat> he was not going for for the win, so to say. He was mostly satisfied to make a draw when he was black. <clears throat> um, yeah, that is, yeah. Um, and and did you guys do a lot of postmortems, you and Karpov? Yeah, a lot of postmortems as well. Yeah, and and sometimes other players came came by too and, and sitting there and we were analyzing or we or uh, some other place uh, making push more and then I came and other people came also and we could be a group of players analyzing the positions and, and that was nice it was very almost familiar so to say those moments yeah, and I miss this a little bit too I must say or quite a lot actually it was uh, yeah, good times in life very yeah. good times in life we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors and then we'll be back with more from the legend Grandmaster Ulf Anderson. I've been playing a bit of Blitz lately, and whenever I'm active online, it's fun to go to aimchess.com and ask their almighty algorithm to give me some insights from my games. It scrapes the sites, the playing sites automatically, and gives you actionable intel. In my case, the real takeaway this time was I got a 7% in resourcefulness in recent games. Um, that's not very good. I need to get better at that. I need to fight harder when I'm losing in a blitz game, look for tricks. And of course, aim chess, as it highlights various aspects of your game, strengths and weaknesses, uh, shows you positions from the game so that you can practice, you can review tactics that you missed uh, and learn lots and a fun way when you review. So please check out aimchess.com. If you decide to subscribe, use the code perpetual30. You can also use the link in the show description to get the same discount 30% off at aimchess.com. Dot com. So another topic, Ulf, your your good friend Jan Timmen is one of my favorite authors. And uh, yes, when, yes. when I read his books like uh, Timmen's Titans and uh, Timmen's Triumphs, of course, your name comes up. And uh, one story he tells is of uh, you and uh, Jan meeting David Bronstein in Tallinn in uh, 19, I think it was 1973. Uh, yes, yes. You stayed yeah. at his house or visited his house? Sorry, I... You visited Bronstein's house, David D David Bronstein? No, no, Bronstein, no, I never visited his, his house, but, but, but he played in the tournament in, the, in, the, in, in Tallinn, yeah, 70, 73, and, um, and um, yeah, I, I spoke quite a lot with Bronstein, so he, it was nice older man already, but he was, yeah, well known for so many nice ideas in chess also, eh? and interesting, very interesting to watch his games and so on also, but very, he was very, seemed to be a very kind man, a kind older man, and and also, for instance, with Jan Timman, my friend Jan Timman, we, I've been many times uh, to his home when he lived in Amsterdam and so on, and we analyzed chess and so on all the time yeah and and he many many times he, he was writing down the analysis but i don't remember the analysis all of them but but when i see it later on then i can remember ah this way analyzed and so on and um, there were also very good moments in life and to to be with young tim and i was also second down for him many times and we had all this nice time and and both enjoying chess extremely much uh, and the analysis and so on and um, yeah there's times that i also miss today you know yeah well luckily in germany you're not too far away from him uh yeah yeah, that is true. That is true. But but we meet now these days only when when we play the, in the German club because he plays in the same club as I do in Germany. Before we played in the, in in the 
top club in Germany. He was in the top club and I was invited to play there too. It was many years ago. It was Ports from from Köln. It's a it's a part of Köln. It's called Ports. And and um, and this club was together with the Solingen at the time. That was the two best clubs and and they they had two uh, big sponsors, each club, no? And and um, um, but the the club that I played for, that was yeah one man. He was all the man. He sponsored very much during many many years in this club, and and then he passed away, unfortunately. He was over 80 years old, but a very rich man, and also watching the games and and um, yeah yeah he he, he liked us very much, and 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 uh, he had yeah. Mostly foreigners in the team. There was at that time it was only one German player at that time. It was um, Lutz is his name, and and he still plays for the club, but but today the club is not sponsored so much as when he was alive because now uh, it's his the the children the sons of of the rich man helps a little bit but they are not so interested in chess like the father was and 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 this club then is not playing in the first division anymore because they don't have they don't spend money on chess today no but but that that was a very strong German team at that time in that club ports very strong club yeah yeah, it's, it sounds like a fun atmosphere. It's a shame, as you say, that that it's uh, not as active. Sorry, it is. Yeah, I was just saying it's it. That it sounds like some great memories. Yes, yes, really, it was really good. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I had a a few more questions about some of your uh your interactions. You have a a famous game against uh. English strong English I am Michael Bossman uh some sometimes called the immortal waiting game <laughs> who 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 guess a bossman a bossman ah yes yes I lost one time at the Hastings with him and and, um, and um, yeah and because well I wanted uh, to press too much to win I was too eager to to win because after yeah uh, I remember after maybe fifteen, between fifteen twenty moves, then I had, the, I think so. Even today, when I look back, I had a clear advantage. He could only wait; he couldn't do anything. And then I was pushing a bit too much, and and then I lost him again. That was a, that was a, a bad loss for me, so to say. I was very disappointed, uh, especially when I had this. Uh, I knew he was, he was a strong player after having that opening. You should, should never lose that position. It was almost criminal to lose that game, I would say. Yeah, it's a funny game to play through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. and uh, Jakob Agard also said, I should ask you what you think of uh, John Nunn's Endgame books. Uh, John Nunn's yeah, Endgame his, book? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I haven't studied it, I must say. I haven't read it. I haven't read so many books. You know, it's mostly I when I read books, so to say, it's, it's about the the games only, and 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 that's a number many games, and and I haven't studied this book. I'm sorry, I haven't done that, but but I'm sure it's good because your man is he's a very strong boss and he's a very strong player, and 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 he was also known for for. Many tricks, making yeah sacrifices and so, but but he could play all sorts of positions. Very clear, yes. Yeah, and great great author as well. Yes, yes, <laughs> I believe, I believe too. Yeah. And um, sorry, and Ulf, one of your uh, another one of your famous achievements is in 1996. You you played a 15 hour simul. 310 boards. Um, apparently that uh, record, that was the world record, but it's been broken. But what was that like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was really nice. It was it was a friend of mine, other Swedish grandmaster, Lars Carlson. He, 
arranged many things for this, and also the the, the man who, who the, he was the was the president of the Stock Confederation, and they organized this, and, and it was, was a little bit outside Stockholm, Stockholm and, and and it was a huge uh, was a was a hall where, where they had many many different kind of games that were showing there. You could visit and, and yeah play any other kind of games, so to say as well, and and and. Yeah, the, this area, yeah, yeah, was was interesting to visit. So. And then they had this the simultan exhibition there as well. And um, I remember so yeah, so many players. And um, yeah, it took so long time. And TV was there, filming and everything, and interviewing me also. And and because we had once it was a, a break for ten or fifteen minutes. In order to take a cup of coffee, and so and, and uh, yeah, I in the when they were coming players and so from many parts of Sweden taking part, different clubs and so on, and, and yeah, I really liked that that time was it was really nice symbol, and, and but it took so long time, and I mean there was a little boy, for instance, he played so. He was one of the last to finish this, and it was in the night, and, and he was sitting there, almost sleeping on the chair, <laughs> so on, but, but playing, playing well, no, and 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 after after the symbol, I, I felt well, and and and, but then a little bit later, maybe four or five o'clock in the morning, we had Lars and I, my friend, and we. Went to McDonald's to have a hamburger, so and then we said goodbye to each other. And when I was going to sleep, then it came. I got such pains in in my legs. Huh. Incredible! I, I I never had such pain as all my legs in both my legs. I, like it was terrible, uh, and and I didn't know what to do. But but my head was feeling okay. But the legs, I, I suffered very much later. But before the the symbol and so, I I made some joggings in the evening so on training and in order to be fit for this. But but I couldn't imagine that would be so tough for the legs. Interesting. Really. Yeah. So did you sit down yeah. at all during the fifteen hours, or were you standing the whole time? Yeah, I was standing at the whole time, walking all the time, all the time, and um, and um, yeah. That was no problem. That's not a problem for me. Also, today, if I give you symbol, I, I, I'm I can I can play many hours. It is no problem. The, for instance, yeah, my head is is okay. It's still functioning reasonably well. I think, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed with you. Remember so many of these these games and these stories. Um, do, do you remember any of the games from the simul? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, the game to one remembers most is always the losses, no? <laughs> and I, I lost two games there, and um, from these games. But I remember I was very optimistic. So I was, yeah, I because both these games, my opponents offered a draw, and I refused draw in these two games, and then I lost these two games. But, but I, I, I wanted to. Try to yeah make a good result also not just to, to play so many but to have a good result and, and but these two losses I remember I couldn't complain because I should have accepted draws in these two games actually but but I wanted to play games and and and, and I, I don't when I give simul I, I take it very seriously and I. Normally I play rather slow in order to that we can have a, a reasonably good game, my opponent and myself, no. And uh, and uh, I yeah I, I I try to play well, just yeah, so not not to lose. My my wish is always that I don't lose the games. Yeah, not that I should win, but that I should shouldn't lose in a game. That is what I'm always how I'm playing, and maybe also in the in the normal tournaments and normal games as well. No? Because I, I don't like to lose. It is the worst thing of everything, yeah, to lose a game, yeah. 
Yeah, you were especially famous for that as white, for being extremely tough to beat if someone had to beat you with the black pieces. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I tried to to just to play well, yeah, and to have control of everything and so on that I feel well and so on. And then, and then, if I if I cannot win, that's not the problem. That when opponent plays well, you can never win when opponent plays well, for instance. And, and you have to be happy with the draw uh, to play well yourself, also in order to make a draw. Then, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. The thing is, you can never do anything by force. I think no, never, because always opponent has a word in, right. uh, in the game. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the theme when you describe beating Korchnoi when you're 19, your games against Larson, how Bosman beat you, and your games in the Simul. If you try too hard to win, you end up losing. <laughs> is the, is the, yeah, the yeah. lesson? Yeah, that is true. That is true. That, that that has happened in many occasions. When you look at games in general, no, many times you can see. Yeah, maybe a player tries very hard, and and then he he over overreaches, so to say, and and he is punished. Yeah, and rightly he would be punished. Yeah, you have to always to respect the position, so to say. It's on the board. I, I think so. I think so anyway. Yeah. It happened to uh, uh, D. Gukesh, the young grandmaster in the Olympiad against uh, Abdu Satarov. Uh-huh. That, uh, that against who? Against? Against Abdu Satarov, the young... Uh, I, uh, yes, I, remember. I saw this game. I saw this game, yeah. And, 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 and Abdu Satarov, he defended very well for us. So the only way maybe not to, to be... Outplayed, so to say, they found good defense uh, with the with the what the queen and bishop against queen and knight yeah. and some pawns. He was a pawn down, but but he made a good fight out of the position, or because it would be very easily easy to lose that game uh, from that point of view. Yeah, yeah, early, much earlier, to be uh, without any uh, counterplay, but he fixed some counterplay and so on and. Yeah, and Gukic, and then, then, yeah, he couldn't accept this, so to say. And, and then it became more and more going for drawish, yeah? coming closer to draw. And, and and then he still made something, and then he blundered a piece at the end, when the game was going to be a draw in general, I think. No, then Black was maybe even slightly better at, at the time. But 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 he couldn't accept draw Gukic in that game. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, Probably a lesson that will stick with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That is that is because he had a fantastic result in the Olympiad. So he won. Yeah, in fact, almost all the games he had won. No. Yeah, and amazing. Fantastic result. Fantastic result. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, of offering draws, Ulf, uh Jakob also mentioned that when you play bullet, you offer a lot of draws. <laughs> When I played who? Bullet chess, like super fast chess. Who did I play you against? Well, Jakob says when you played bullet chess, speed chess, you offer draws. He he said you offer a lot of draws. Yeah, I, I have offered a lot of uh, speed chess, you say. Or yeah, more. and especially no. bullet chess, like really fast chess. Yeah, yeah. I, um, in his in his speech and blitzes, so I had yeah lately. So to say, when I played, I've been off the draws um, quickly, so on, and, and and because yeah, the tension is very high. So then I I I prefer yeah to make it all if I can, and and not so not so long game because with, with blitz or speech and it is yeah it's a uh, a lot of tension and, and stress, no? That I don't like this kind of stress, <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, I want to have more quiet set, like in the in the normal games. You sit there quietly with a cup of coffee, and you think of the position, and you see the other players thinking and and playing and so on. And that's a much more healthier atmosphere, so to say. The speeches, it is, uh, yeah. It is, yeah. It can be exciting for a while, but then, then, but but then it will be that for me. Then it comes later on. It it comes stress, 
and then I, this I don't like. No? Only if I can handle the stress, I can do that. Also handle this. Uh, lately, uh, my last tournament, I handled it well. This uh, and that was was easy. Then, then uh, I just played the games and, and no special tension, even with little time and uh, so moving and so on, the pieces. But but uh, I've seen, for instance. Players who are very quiet when they play, very quiet, and, and people who are very nervous also. When I see people are nervous, they they make yeah even more more what's I say noise and signs of being nervous than than I I do normally. And and uh, it could be nice to watch these players play, but but when I've seen players you know, quietly so. For instance, I, I played in this Malmö uh, tournament, the, the Blitz tournament. It was in the summer, and it was for veterans, actually. The, and then one man there is organizing this uh, uh, already a few years, every year, every summer. And and they invited, that should be pensioners, I mean, people over 60 years old and so on. But... He invites also the, some of the best uh, young players from from Malmo, from the area also. And Nils Grandelius is always playing this tournament, and he had won every time when he played. He won the tournament, but but the the tournament is made in different groups. Uh, I think ten players in five different groups, and then the two first goes to the in each group goes to the A final and the third and the fourth goes to the B final and so on. And and then I was walking around there. One year, a few years ago, I played this tournament and then I made mainly, I made draws in almost all the games. I often draw very early. And one game I played with a young man. He he's plays well. He's playing normal chess well and also blitz as well. But he's very ambitious. And I offered him a draw. And he refused. And then I had to win the game. <laughs> and it was almost the only game I won. But I was very interested to see the other players. I wanted to see especially uh, Ferdinand Hellers played in this tournament. And Nils Grandelius also. And Ferdinand Hellers is also a player. He, he was very talented, very good. He's still talented. But he's now uh, about 50 years old. And he, he's a lawyer. And, and, he, and, and he's very busy. There's no time for chess. But he, he plays this tournament also there in Malmö. And he played very well, although he had not made trainings on. And I was very really curious about his play and also Nils Gandelius' play. And so I was walking them, watching the games and making quick draws. <laughs> but the last time, this year when I played, then I decided I'd just play the games and, 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 and not of off draws. And it was going very well for me. But then I didn't want to play the 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 A fund because I qualified for the A fund. But then I was only going to I wanted to watch the A final, especially and to watch them. And I was looking at especially uh, Nils Grandelius and also Johnny Hector. They so calm. It was like sitting there almost in the church, just yeah, enjoying. The life. Now, it was so nice to watch them, and no tension at all. They're just sitting there and, and, and making the moves nicely, not that the pieces are falling in time for and things like this. That's very nice, and, and it was like, yeah, that yeah, was very nice to see them, actually. And, and also, I saw this one, this one, he was even a time person, very much time pressure in in the game there, and, but he was very calm. He moved nicely, uh, uh, quickly but nicely, not uh, dropping the pieces or anything. That uh, and and yeah, they, and also a play played very calm. So that's so in nice to watch also. That was Pia Kramling. She's also very uh, playing soft and and not hitting the clock and just. It, it's enjoyable for me just to watch them play. <laughs> it was so very. I enjoyed that very much just to watch them play. Actually, yeah, but but I was very impressed by this that they that they they are they are not nervous, so to say. 
maybe they are, but they don't show it at least. And it, 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 and you cannot see it in the form, the way they move the pieces and so, and they sit in a very relaxed way, you know. And but otherwise, yeah. When, if you play blitzes on, yeah, you can see people. They are shaking the legs or uh, moving the body, making grimaces and everything, and and making tension in the game. But and this I I don't like this makes me uh, what should I say that I get tension also. But when I see those other players uh, as I mentioned these three players, so just sitting there so smoothly making the moves, yeah, 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 yeah it, it it's a pleasure yes to to watch. Yeah. Did Did you ever ask them how they do it off? No, no, I never asked. I never asked. But, but yeah, I don't know how they do it. But they, are, they, they, they have no tension. It was more or less, let's say, maybe I could play like this. It was when I was young, with, when I was 25 years old or so. I was sitting at the board, that, uh, and almost always I was in time pressure because the, I enjoyed thinking about the positions. And sometimes I try to, yeah, try to create something new, something for me new, so to say. Always, if I even I got the same position in, in, in the games before, I still was thinking maybe I can find something extra and so on. And, but in general, I couldn't do that. So I was just spending the time. But I enjoyed sitting there. For instance, Today, when I play, I feel, I feel more tension. I, I, I feel more the, let say the, the competition today than I did then. Then I didn't feel competition, just enjoying life at the table. But, but today it's different. Today it's competition, and I, I hope that I can play well as well. But it's a competition, and there is tension, on, almost all the time. Yeah, I must say. Yeah, it's. I think yeah. it gets harder as you get older. Um, um, yeah, I believe so too. I believe so too. And and, and also, yeah, when all they try to, yeah, try to keep up to make the things as good as possible, no, and not to, yeah, not to to play bad and and to lose and so on. But especially, try to keep. I hope that I can keep a good level on my chess when I play. This is my, what should I say, my wish. My yeah. wish is if I can do that, then I'm satisfied. Not, not, I'm not so satis especially satisfied if, if I win as if I play well. Well, I'm very happy when I succeed to win the game, even if, um, in, in, let's say, in an open tournament, in an open tournament, Many players will win many games, no? and and that goes for me too. I can win many games, but in the opens, and and because you play also opponents of very different strength in an open tournament, no? you you never know who you play, and and so on. But 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 just to, not to lose. I'm satisfied if I don't lose. Yeah. I uh, this if I don't lose, I, the life is okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, nervousness, of I was lucky to get to interview Viswanathan Anand, and ah yes, and, oh, yeah, he he yeah. Excuse me, that I yeah, go ahead. Interrupt. Yeah, he's also played. It's I must say, it's nice to watch. <laughs> also in the, in the normal games, but even in, in blitz and so on. And 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 that I mentioned with with uh, Johnny Hector, Niskandelis, and Pia Kramlin. There's also a play very very soft as well. He doesn't make noise at the boards or the big grimace or nothing. He sits nicely, it's moving. That it, it, that's. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Him when I mentioned <laughs> yeah. this before, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's definitely a player that you, you for me, that you, I can just sit and watch and, and enjoy life, so to say, because I don't, I don't get nervous when I'm with them, so to say. They, you keep, yeah. So you feel very, I feel very, very well, yeah. Just and no tension, yeah. When I, it's nice to play, uh, especially nice, I think, to play players like that when. Yeah, who, who, how they are. Yeah. The, the, for me, it's uh, yeah, it's the best when I can play such kind of players. 
uh, well, I like to play with everybody, but but especially like that, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So when they're relaxed, you feel more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, I feel relaxed just to watching them. Yeah, it makes me feel very well. Yeah, I feel good. I feel really good then. Yeah. And not the, the the competition like this, like um, you can see in uh, they say in sports and every kind of sport as well. And uh, yeah, this competition and then uh, and then they say after they uh, they they make some 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 movement of of victory in this that makes me all nervous. Yeah, so to say to see this tension yeah coming out yeah this um, uh, i don't that's not my my thing so to say yeah when i interviewed anand uh i asked him how he looks so calm and he said he's actually terrified on the inside he said even though he looks calm he doesn't feel calm <laughs> Uh, I, that, that, I, that can happen. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, I can believe also. But he gives a very nice impression and when he sits right. there. They yeah, are very nice. Yeah, doesn't and help. It, it, Sorry, go ahead. And, and also, the player was, was very calm. So, but you could see he was thinking very much. And so, but but who was calm? He was calm also. He was very calm also, and not making. Things, no, uh, around You're just sitting there and and, and thinking, but but um, but uh, yeah, other players, for instance, they make uh, this with the tension, so for instance, Kasparov is playing with the tension, yeah. and and just seeing him, his face and everything, it yeah, it makes me nervous, so to say, yeah, but it doesn't. I don't want to. Um, speak bad or anything like that, but he's fantastic, the superior player, it's fantastic, uh, his chess and so on. But, just, but see this ambition and this uh, yeah, way of moving the piece and everything, it's, it's very, it gives me stress, yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Yes. Um, yeah. So, Ulf, I have a, a few more questions. Are you okay to, to keep going? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Fine. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. This is amazing to hear your stories. So, um, so you have a famous win over a young Alexei Shirov, um, where uh -huh, uh -huh. you played this uh, famous yes. bishop sacrifice. Uh, bishop takes h4, and then Shirov later played one of the most famous chess moves of all time that he said came from from he got the idea from his game with you. Have you talked to uh, Alexei about this? Yeah, yeah, he told me about this. No, that uh, that he had this idea from from our game. No, and I'm I feel very proud of this when he speaks like like that of my game with him. It was it was um, yeah, it was a nice game, so say. But it was a tournament in Biel in Switzerland, and. Um, and um, well, he still won the tournament in a nice way, no? Uh, he won many games and so on, and came back and 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 just won the tournament. But but that uh, yeah, I was very satisfied with with this game and that I could win with him because he's he's also I know he's a very good end game player as well, no? But he he plays of course all the positions well and. and has very, what said, he's very, what say, inventive. He has many ideas, and, and yeah, and, and it's not easy to play with a player who has many ideas and so on. And he can, he can, what I say, find things just at the board, and, and he tries to do that. And and he's coming also quite off, I think, quite often in time pressure, but he handles it good also. The time pressure and so, but but um, what I say that is, yeah, he he's a tough opponent, really. Yeah, very strong player, very strong player. I see, I've seen now lately he's coming back because it was some years ago it was not going so well in the tournament for him, but now he's coming back and, and, and come back to the top, so to say. And because he played in the very top for many years, some year, many years ago, no, for many years he was in the very top, uh, and and he could win, you know, even today he wins many games also, and very nice to see his games, yeah, because yeah, 
what's that? So, yeah, so many ideas, and 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 and, and yeah, um, it's a player. One one should fear playing him with him for sure. You should fear a lot because uh, yeah, there you have to stay awake all the time. Yeah, in order not to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, absolute uh, legend. Yeah, and like you say, it's nice to see him in his fifties uh, rising again. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm glad when I that I see he's came and he's back and coming back and so because he was also well, he's also a good fighter, real fighter. Yeah. And I saw that you had your peak rating Ulf, at the age of forty six. Um, do you feel you were as strong as ever then, or do you think there was some rating inflation at that point? When, when, which year? Uh, 1997. Uh, then I hit my highest, I think, my yeah. highest rating. Yes. <clears throat> but, but, but at that time, after, what's I say, after 1990, then, what's I say, when they, later on, when they, when the wall, uh, Broke in Germany, to say, no, in, in, in Soviet Union, everything, no, and and these things, and then suddenly, little by little, I realized I I had no much less invitations overall, almost nothing for many years, and and, and that was not so easy. And then I had to start to to learn to play open tournaments because before of that I didn't play open tournaments like a principal yes I didn't want to play open tournaments even with very good conditions economic conditions I, I didn't want to play because I, I wanted to compete with players that we have the same opponents not that we have no for instance, an open tournament that that's like if there are hundred players in a tournament, there are hundred tournaments because everybody has a different pairings, no? You never have the same. And then I've somehow that how can we compare this? It's no that's not the fair competition. Fair competition is all play all. Yeah, that is the only fair competition. Well, this is another competition, but that is a real fair competition. We have the same opponents, yeah. So I didn't want to play opens, but then I had to start to learn to play opens, and it was very difficult. And, and, and somehow, and to win one open tournament, for me, I find it more difficult to win an open tournament than to win a closed tournament. they all play all. With an, an open tournament, suddenly, because some people on the side just pass you easily and so on. And, and, and that's why, yeah, opens are, are difficult to play. And, and you never, in the open tournaments, you don't have guarantees as well as a professional. You, in general, no? well, everybody has its own what's that, contact with the organizer. But in general, it is, it's not the same safety in an open tournament, like in a closed tournament. And, and um, it never, uh, yeah, appeared to me, I didn't like it before. But today, I'm glad to play there at all. Today, I'm glad just when I can play, if I, I'm allowed to play. So that makes me feeling well today. And then I'm happy. Even if it's open tournaments, I, I don't mind anymore. That's good to hear. But you you had to adjust your game when you started playing in open tournaments. No, no, no not really. Just, just I played the same. I try to play the same, if it's open or not. But I know in open tournaments you need to win many games if you have, if you wish to to be in the ahead or to win a prize. You, know? you need to win many games, and and. I find it very difficult, but 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 I mean I I don't play that like anyway. I don't mind even if you draw in the open tournaments. I I just try to play play my game and to be happy. Just to be there among three four hundred people. Just to sit there in the back in the middle somewhere. Just to play my game. Then then I feel satisfied. And if I can if I can play well, I try to play well, of course, and not to lose and so. But 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 I know you you need always to win a lot of games in the opens. That is the, the difficult point for me. Yeah, 
Yeah. And and because I don't want to to risk, I try not to risk when I play. Just so make my draw. But with the draw, you don't come far in an open tournament. Uh, yeah. And and Ulf, uh, you're also you're you're one of the few people who was a world class tournament player, but also a world class correspondence player. Um, do for, you for not for uh, like correspondence chess? Like uh, uh, correspond. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes. Do, yeah. do you still play? Yeah, I, I, I stopped. I stopped with this. I, I was invited in the. It was in the middle of the nineties, ninety five or ninety six, or, or ninety seven maybe. This time I was invited by the uh, the president of the the correspondence in the, in Norway. Uh, he this man lives in. He lives in Stockholm, but I was invited to play one one closed up tournament there. Um, it would be a very strong tournament, and so and the world champion would would play also the Dutch player uh, and and then um, sixteen players. No, no, in correspondence, it's all the it, it's uh, impair all this. So you have the same number of games with white and black. So you have 15 or you have 13 or 17 players. No? So you will always have have the same numbers of white and black pieces. And 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 uh, I accepted this invitation for fun because I wanted to analyze that and to have some quiet but chess without tension. And that's so, so I started to play this, but I, I was worried first. So, so how can I make, yeah, manage so many games at the same time, no? And, and, and uh, yeah, I, I was really nervous. And, and I, I think, uh, thinking also, I, would, I don't like to lose. Uh, for me, it was more important not to lose any games in that tournament. Uh, uh, and, not to win at all. That's that's that I can keep well not to lose because when correspondent says you can you can have a cup of coffee, you can analyze a day or two or three or one week over one move, no? And and um, and that was my worries. And, and and but I did this and and I enjoyed it sitting there sometimes in the coffee house in my town, analyzing. And then when I was satisfied with some move, and then I went to the post office and posted this, this move to my opponent. And that was going well. And then, and, 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 and um, yeah, I managed to make these, all these games in the, in the time you, that you had for, you had what was it? Uh, 10 days, no, 30 days for, for for ten moves, I think, no? you had to, thirty days for ten moves in each game, and and uh, yeah, I was so busy with it, and, and it was going well, but I took it so seriously, and 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 so I only analyzed during a few years, five six years, when I had a couple of tournaments of those. The, of those um, correspondence chess games and, and only analyzing, analyzing. So I, I, I couldn't keep up with my normal chess so say, because I, I was more, for me it was more important try to analyze it well and, and, and not to lose of any games in these correspondence games. So I, I had no time to make preparation for my normal chess, the well, most important chess for me, my normal chess, when when I played in a team or when I played at a tournament. And and I, I was sitting there analyzing every day and then going to the post office. And then I went to play my normal game without any preparation <laughs> right. for, a few, for a few years, no? And, and then... And then it was not very nice the first year, but then after a few years, it became then became hard work actually. Then it was not so enjoyable anymore. It was just hard work, and I, with my ambition not to lose any game, and so and and after the yeah, but later when I finished this tournament, then I was invited 
number of times by the same uh, organizer and also to be in the play the world championship tournament for course sponsor but uh, I said I'm very sorry I don't want that anymore I stopped with this it's, uh, I don't have time for this actually and, and, and we say the the players uh, play the normal says uh, I'll say we we don't have time for correspondence yes, so to say it is it takes yeah all it takes all your, all your life, so to say, for for many years. And, and uh, I want to spend my time with the normal chefs, not with the correspondent chefs. Then for me, it is more like that's more for the let's say amateur, the persons maybe that uh, go to work every day and they come home and they can play correspondent chefs because they don't have time to travel to play normal chess in the tournaments. For, but for the professional, as I see it, it it's, um, yeah, it's not possible to make it, actually. If, if, you, if you have ambition and you want to have a uh, good result, try, try to make a good result, at least. Because everybody in the correspondence can analyze well. And, and um, yeah, why shouldn't the, the, the players and... Uh, be able to analyze well. Everybody can analyze well, I think, and can get good results in correspondence. So, so that is, yeah, it, it's difficult actually. It is not. It's not for me, at least, it's, that I found out. And I, I, I don't think I will ever play correspondence anymore. Although I, I liked it the few, the first few years, and because it uh, takes too much energy. For me, it took too much energy. It was, yeah, I couldn't do that again, never. I want to sit there and have my opponent in front of me and and analyze it after shake the hand and then you, uh, yeah, start playing so on. Yeah, but, and uh, engine, engines have probably made it more yeah. challenging too. Yeah, yeah, no, with the engines, then it, then for me, then it doesn't make sense anymore. Only, only... If the players would, let's say, promise or there would be a law, let's say, that you may not use engines during during your tournament at all during the tournament, then it could be. Then it could. Well, still, I wouldn't play even then because I I had enough of correspondence. For me, I I'm full of it. I cannot anymore. But but then that would be. Yeah, was say more fair in my opinion. Now for the engines, it completely uninteresting. That is, there like two people having the engines playing each other. I can play with my own computer. I don't need to play with a computer from another country, so to say. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. With uh, yeah, then with the engines, yeah, to play correspondence. Yes, uh, not for me at least. For me, no way. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and. And Ulf, I just have a, a couple more questions. One is, yeah. as I as I mentioned to you in in the email, I was uh, Grandmaster Robert Hungoski was was kind enough to I share did. share your information with me, and he was telling me that he's come to visit you, and that you you lead a very sort of um, what we call an offline existence. Not a lot of computers. Um, yeah. What is your, what is your day to day life like, Ulf, both in Germany and when you're back in Sweden? Yeah, when when I when, when I'm here in Germany, then, then I'm often in front of the computer here to follow the 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 chess events on on internet uh, because I I love to to look at the games from other players. I love to look at the games, many games. It can be the top and can also be um, doesn't have to be the very top either. But it's in, I'm curious about the positions, so the games that they play. And, and um, but, but in my home in Arvoga in Sweden, there, there, I don't have a computer. <laughs> uh, I I had only the, the computer with the with the chess space I had, but it broke down. But here in Germany, I have a, a computer with chess space because the chess space I find is very good to, because you have many games and you can see uh, so many games of players you. 
never heard of, for instance, in an open tournament. You know, I go to play Mr. X, I've never seen him, never heard anything. And then suddenly I can see hundred games of him, for right. instance. No? <laughs> and, and this I, it's very nice that I like. So I can look a few games from my opponent and, and then I go to play. And for this, for this thing, uh, I like computers very much. Instead of having hundreds of books with you, you cannot carry it to the tournament. No, you can only carry per, a couple of books. But but the computer, you have, you have thousands of games, and you can and look. This is a very good, very good idea. The, the person who invented this uh, thing. So, so and 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 just to, to look games, I can look at games. Today I can look, for instance, look up. There's suddenly, suddenly I feel like watching some old games. I can look. I don't mind looking games from the beginning, beginning of 1900 to see the top players and so, and to go through till up today, you know. And and just to look at some games, it's it's nice actually, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I was when I emailed you. Robert had said you check your email every three days. You don't have a computer, so I was surprised no. when you answered in a couple hours. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, because here I have the computer. Yeah. yeah. In my town, I have only the library. In in my town, it's small town, and I like to go there. Yeah, every now and then I go there to to check my mails and to and to see to see or sometimes some tournament um, online or, or or if it's live uh, just to to sit there a few hours and to watch uh, and um, and um, yeah i miss a computer in my home so to say that i should have, should have but but here in germany i have this and and um, and i use it very well though, and, and because uh, yeah, it's good with the computer. I like. But I, there's I'm something. Thinking, yeah, Sorry, I'm thinking even of having a computer or to to buy a special telephone. You can have telephone and and computer, internet, and so on. You can have yeah. no. And and this is very good idea. I think I'm, I've been thinking long time. Maybe I should buy a thing like this, and I can sit. Yeah, when I'm on train or in airplane. Even if I'm in the toilet, I can sit there and look, look, look games or to look results and so on. And, and, and very convenient, yeah. Very yeah. good in, invention, yeah, this thing. Although there's yeah. something nice, Ulf, about this idea of you just having no computer, just surrounded by books and, uh, and walking in nature. There is something very pure about that as well. Ah yes, yeah. It, it is. It's a good life, so to say. It's a, it's a, without the stress, so to say. Trying right. to be without stress, but but sometimes I I I like also to be, to be in in a big city, let's say Stockholm, and so there everything is faster. You know? people walk faster. People maybe speak faster. Everything goes faster. You no. Know? Cars, buses, everything, and the metro and everything. Because I, I like life, so to say. It's it's good life in Stockholm. And now when I'm in my town, home, small town, that I, I feel bored. It is not uh, life anymore. No, it's not. I I don't like to to be there. So especially not alone when I'm there. I have my friends and so on, but but. Now when I go to my home in, in Sweden, I, I stay only a few days, and then I go to Stockholm, or I go here to my woman here in Germany, and and uh, yeah, I prefer that. Yeah, but but I remember when when Robert Ungarski came to my home, so yeah, we analyzed chess very much. So it was very pleasant. He's a very nice young man. Oh, I like him very much. Ben, yeah, and, and, and yeah, we analyze very much and, and looking at the positions. And also, when I was in Argentina, I I stayed in his home for a week, and um, and then um, because I know him, Robert and 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 Sandro Mareco, I consider them both good friends to me, and I stayed in 
each by each one a week, and we were looking chess and 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 so on. and and Islam not not the stress but good 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 life so to say and 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 yeah I mean I like to see I like also when especially when Robert and Sandro when they are playing well and so in the tournaments and I see they are doing well both of them they are doing. Yeah. Quite well. I'm very happy to see that. Yeah, it is. It is good to see that, and 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 I hope it goes well for them in the future for both of them that they have yeah good achievements in in the tournaments also, and and I think they can because for instance last time they were both in the in the World Cup in the knockout yeah. matches, and and yeah just to qualify to this event it's it's very difficult not to make qualification for the, for the world cup i find yeah, and, and but they did it they did it well i must say yeah i yeah. interviewed uh grandmaster Mareko as well yeah nice guy and great player obviously um yeah and and i understand if you've coached uh the argentinian national team a bit are you still doing coaching no, yes, I was coaching them for. It was ideal, Sandro Mareco, when he came to my home for some time. Then and we, our landlords and so, on, and then he he made a, he asked me if maybe I could be captain of the uh, Argentinian team, and then yeah, well, it would be very interesting. So he called uh, to to Argentina, and he was speaking with. Uh, Dr. Eduardo Mochero is his name. He's a lawyer, and and he has much to do with chess, and he he, he helps his sponsors much in Argentina in chess. You know? And and he asked him, and 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 he would agree to this, and so he took care. Of, he was my sponsor for the Argentina team in Olympia, uh, 2014 in Tromsø in Norway. It, and it was the first time I had been to Olympia for many years. So now not playing before I was playing, but right. now I was not playing. But I saw all these players, and and I felt very well about it. And to be captain, then I didn't feel, feel stressed because it was some of the years when I had, I had very much stress for my own normal games. No, so it it was very nice just to be coach there and with the team and. It, and Argentina, they, I think they had a good team. They have, they have strong players. And and also in Argentina, chess has a history. Chess is very popular in Argentina, for instance. And and I know that Fischer he liked very much to play in Argentina. And so he played tournament and and match with Petrosian, for instance, and so on in Buenos Aires. And, and so the. In Argentina, they do love chess, and and it was nice to to be captain for, for yeah for these countries that love chess as well. And to, especially yeah to the yeah to the place that I I know and so and and for me it was yeah a new kind of job because I was not used to this and I always got help from. Um, by Mr. Eduardo Mochero, the doctor, because he was captain for the ladies' team. So he arranged everything to put in the computer the, the team set up. I said, so the team would be so, and he fixed it on the computer. So the, the team yeah, was sent to the, the uh, feeder, so to say, not for the organizer. And... Uh, yeah, it was a it was a pleasure, and I could see also they they did well. This Argentina team they had they had a good position, and and then and and then but towards the end of the tournament, and then facing during the rounds, I was sitting there at the team watching and the games, and also walking. I hope could be inside the area, could walk around and to see other games and matches. And I, I enjoyed this. I did this. And and also that I was sitting also very much to be a tent for for my team Argentina then. And and to if somebody wanted some information of the players who wanted to say something and so on. And and they they did very well for a long time. And then 
very close to the end, and if, in the round before the last round, Argentina played the United States, and and that was going to be a tough match, and and the yeah, United States won with two and a half, one and a half, and I was. Yeah, the players were a little bit sad, and I was also a bit sad. Uh, yeah, and but Argentina was not without chances. They, they, because a player in the very top there, Sandro Mareco, he was playing a very good Olympia, and it was dangerous for for every opponent in the other com- for other countries as well. Uh, and but but this day he couldn't win. It was a draw. But he won many games, and he didn't lose any games, for instance, in this Olympiad. And and then, so in the last round, then then the team got to play not so strong team like United States because they lost, they, they fell down a little bit. But then the last round they won well, and they could pop up a little bit higher on the list at the end, no? Yeah. Um, but it was it was good work to be captain. Really good work. Nice, nice work. Really nice work. Yeah. So it sounds like in uh, 2024, if if you were offered to captain in uh, Budapest, would you be interested? Yeah, I, of course, I would be very interested. Yeah. yeah. I'm really, really, yes, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like someone should do that. And do you do any coaching aside from that training, Ulf? Besides? Besides the training of the Argentinian team, do you have any students or classes? Well, in general, not really. Because but I had, I had one a year ago, but because I, had, I was invited to be, make training with some player and once a player it was a ladies player from United States when I was on the internet many years ago then I said yeah but but I don't I don't do it on on online on internet I only face by face I want to analyze with with my students so to say no? but this yeah that uh, that person couldn't afford but I only only want to uh, to to sit in front of person so a year ago, I was invited by a, a play in Germany from Munich, and um, he had been in contact with me some years ago already, but then I had declined because I had no time for this at that time. I felt busy with other things. But now, yeah, so he mailed me again, and I said, yeah, but but um, I can do it online. But if we can meet, I can come by train to Munich and and, and we'll do it there. I stay a few days and I go back. Um, so he fixed it. And he was very interesting. So he he sent the ticket and uh, everything, and and he paid the hotel for a few days for me there, and we made about five hours daily for a few days, no, and. And uh, that was pleasant. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, he liked it too. Uh, and um, yeah, like this, I I do my training only face by face. That's how I do it. Yeah. And do you tell them all of your end game secrets? Everyone wants to know your end game secrets. <laughs> no, normally then. No, then when I was yeah one year ago, then it was more to 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 check the games of of himself. Because it was a player who had stopped for some years, but now he wanted to begin again, no, to continue. And um, so he had played some open tournaments, his first open tournaments for a long time, to have some experience. And then he, sh- he showed me these games, or he sent me the games, so I could study them beforehand. So I looked at that, and then in the second tournament, he had already better results. But from from after the first one, uh, improved quickly. Then coming back to the the normal style, so to say, for him, no. And and um, he had this interest to to improve and to play open tournaments. He's also playing in in a club in Munich, and and uh, yeah, he enjoyed it. And I too, I I prepared many games also to take to him and to to old games 
I took old games, I wrote them down. I, I worked quite a lot for this, from the computer. I wrote from the computer, from the, down this, uh, from chess base, the old games that I thought were nice, the old games up till today. From 1900 up till today, so I've selected games, wow. maybe 50, 50 games, so, and I wrote them down by hand. <laughs> I wrote them down each game by hand. It took me a couple of weeks, but I had my material, and, and I went there. But he, but he wanted to look his games only first because he was interested in this. And then this was a bit extra. Then I recommended some things and looking at the old games and so on. And, and um, yeah, so he looked at some of these games too. But mainly it was, was that I corrected his games if I thought there was something that was not good or what was good. I looked his games through and, 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 and I told him, yeah, what I thought. And and from these games that you picked, do you have like a favorite game of all time, whether it's your own game or or someone else's? Yeah, I I have many favorite games for instance. For instance, I would like to mention look, lately from a few favorite games that I had. Sure. I have, um, it was it's from the our world champion Magnus Carlsen. It, I saw a couple of games. I guess maybe a year or two ago, when he t- he took part in the in the World Cup. Uh, normally, he shouldn't have a right to take part of it because right. it was qualification for the World Championship. So, in principle, he shouldn't have right to play because he's already the, uh, in the final, no, in the finalist, no. Uh, yeah. uh, and 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 he was he was playing there. He he fell out of the tournament in the. It was the semi-final. If it was against a Polish player, Duda, I think Duda, mm-hmm. and I do, he fell off. I think in was it? Uh, I believe it was a rapid chess or so. That and and on the other side, uh, Fedosev fell out also in the semi-final, and, and then but then they they had to play for the third and fourth place. For these two places, no, a match after, when they played this finals, they played for the third and fourth places, no, two normal games and then a rapid games if needed. No? And those two games, when Carlsen played with Fedosev, I liked so much when he won so nicely with white and with black. It, yeah, maybe Fedosev was not at his best, I don't know, but, but Carlsen, I was, I, I hadn't seen. I haven't seen such games that I like so much for many years. And for many years, and I really liked those two games. And how how he played, it was like it was like outplaying the poor Fedosev. And <laughs> Fedosev is an excellent player, no? Right. He, a very top player. And, and 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 if he would win against the world champion. It was not, in general, it would not be a special surprise either, no? So, I mean, I want to say that he's extremely good, I think, no? Uh, um, but how Carlsen treated him playing in, in very subtle, it was like the teacher with a student, completely outplayed him. And it 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 was wonderful to see those games, how he played. And, yeah, really... For me, super games, yeah. And but for Carson, it's, maybe it's not very special. For he has many, so many good games. But for me, it was really the yeah. It it was like a beautiful picture or you know, like a film. Yeah, fantastic, yeah, fantastic, yeah. And I haven't seen games like this afterwards either. Yeah, since that, yeah. So impressive for me yeah and and, and he won with two zero this match you know, for the third and fourth places yeah. so he was third then Carlson and and yeah and and uh, yeah I saw also lately on, online when it, it was the last tournament when Carlson played and he won no it was let me see who it was it was it, he had a I mean, who, who was the fi- finalist with him again? And I guess it was a very nice game. It came down to, I mean, 
yeah, Carlson made some for me spectacular moves and nice, and then became very positional. It looked like, like the the Indian play would come out to say, but but he had some weak points and Carlson had a nice. The queen and rook, they both had first they had two rooks, but they had maybe only three pawns or four pawns each. But Carlson got the better, better pieces there and, and, and positional good squares and so on. And when I looked at this, actually, it's a very nice game. And, and also, it was difficult to see that that position occurred that they came from that moment. Just, Probably lost the position, but that Carlson saw many moves before and with many variations before and so and this and to make this judgment in in a rapid game very impressive also. I like this game very much uh, by Carlson. Yeah, he makes many he plays many games and many nice moves that I, I enjoy very much to see yeah, like. Then I say, yeah, this is the way. Yeah, that's that's right. So that's how to play. Yeah, and it's nice to see his games. Yeah, yeah, yeah I I enjoy very much. Yeah, yeah. He, what a player. Um. So, Ulf, just one last question. Uh, you've been so generous with your time. I really appreciate it. Um. Do you have from your own career? Do you have a a favorite memory, or is there something you're most proud of in in all of your chess career? Yeah, yes, I have many memories, good memories, good memories, and difficult to select special, but but but, but yes, I, I like when. To be yes in the chess world, when I'm well, yeah, and, and analyzing so on. For instance, I I I have many good memories together with Jan Timman, for instance, when I was yeah. was was second out of him, and very good times. And and for instance, when he played with Karpov, for instance, in in Amsterdam and and uh, and uh, Indonesia half match. In each place, no, and when we were there, it was Pickett, Jerome Pickett, and Yassi Seiravan and me. We were seconds for Jan Timmer, and it was really good time analyzing, and then and then sitting there in the public when when Kalpo and Timmer were playing the match and speaking to each other and so on. It's a really good time, and and uh, it's only very sad when when. He lost the game. It was sad, but, but but so many good things anyway, and that was yeah, really good times. And, and I think yeah, for instance, many times with Jan Timman in that in that kind of situation, or as a second, and and, and um, yeah, always he yeah, was always fighting well and so on, and, and always very ambitious. And and um, but with the right to be ambitious, I'm sure, because he was very dangerous for for the world champion also, no? and he could win, he could win games with the world champion, and but 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 to win the cup in a long match, that nobody could do that. Only Kasparov, with the minimum one time, no, succeeded, yeah. and, but. Uh, those those times to yeah to be there at the, at the world championship match. For instance, I was in the, at the world championship match in Sevilla with a friend of mine uh, from from Brazil, and we were watching Carlo Kasparov, and and um, it was what is eight which year was that in Sevilla? It was eighty seven or eighteen? I think eight. it's eighty seven. Eighty seven, yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And and I came there to Seville just to to be um, um, or say spectator and then I met my friend there and, and I stayed for one month there and, and to watch the games and with my friend and so on. And 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 it was very nice, yeah. And and yeah, many people were there and and it was good life, yeah. And, and and also in the press room, many players, grandmaster or, or 
or press people from uh, from the Soviet Union that time from for from both sides so from the, the people for Kasparov and the people f- uh, from Karpov no? and the press from we were there also were analyzing moves during the match during the game and um, yeah and yeah analyzing and talking in general and and very nice competition and very friendly, no, not uh, not like uh, like enemies at all. No, just in, interesting and curious in what's going on in the big match. And yeah, yeah, that was very special, I must say. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice that for all of your accomplishments, your your best memories are are with other people, with other chess players. Yes, I would say so. I would say so. Yes, yes. That I then then I I feel well when I'm with other people, and we we say we have a nice conversation because we know we we love the same thing, chess, no? Yeah. And, and this is, yeah. Well, well, Ulf, I think that's a beautiful note to end on. I want to thank you again. This has been amazing to hear so many great stories. Thank you. Thank you. I really nice. appreciate it. It was nice to be interviewed by you, Ben. Yeah. Th- thanks glad. a lot, Ulf. Uh, best oh. wishes. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and good luck for you. All the best for you. Thanks to everyone who helps make Perpetual Chess possible. Big shout out to my producer, Matthew Passy. I'd also like to thank the Blue Wire Podcast Network, with whom we are proud to be affiliated. Be sure to follow us on social media, Beneficial1 on Twitter, at Perpetual Chess on Instagram, and or you can join the Perpetual Chess Facebook group. You can email me, ben at perpetualchesspod.com. And of course, last but not least, I'd like to give major thanks to the Perpetual Chess Patreon and PayPal supporters. Those who choose to join that community based on their level of support support can do things like submit questions for guests of the show, have access to live Zoom Q&A lectures with grandmasters who often have appeared on the show, going over chess games, answering questions, stuff like that. And you can even get access to ad-free perpetual chess if that's your preference. So, but most of all, thanks to everyone for listening and we will catch you all on the next episode.